Hello my friends, today I will give you a quick overview uh, over Topaz Mask AI. This is a program that works as a standalone program or as a plugin. When you open the program, it would look something like this and you have to open an image. To open an image, click this open button and then choose your image for this. Let's see, I will work with this dog image because fur is always hard or tricky for people to select. So if you're working a Luminar Neo, for example, and you cannot select uh, furry friends, then use Topaz Mask AI and this will make your life so much easier and you can save it as a PNG and then take it back into Luminar Neo. When you first open the, the image, you are greeted with by this uh, blue overlay. This is blue means compute. This is what you would use to paint around the edges. This, and then the program will uh, select the fur on the edges. Green is what you want to keep in your mask and red what you don't want to keep in your mask. So for this example, I would use, for example, the green and paint around the dog like this to tell the program, hey, this is my subject. This is what I want to keep. And then I can use the bucket tool to just fill it in. And then for the background, I can tell it, this is my background. This is what I do not want to keep. It looks something like that. And there we go. And then you just click on compute mask and see how well it did or not. This takes a few seconds, but it's totally worth the wait. And this is our selection. Now I'm going to reset this mask because I do want to show you how well the mask AI works here. We can add the text subject and this is not just for humans, it selects pretty much any subject. There is the auto the text sky, then you have the brush or color range you can use. For this uh, particular image, we will use auto the text subject. So when you click on that, then it automatically creates this tri map. Like I said before, the blue is for the edges, the green is what we want to keep, and the red is for the background. And it found the subject really, really well. So let's see, compute mask, and there is our clean background. Now we have to refine this, it's not perfect. It looks really good, but it's not for perfect. If we look here, this part needs a little bit of work. So zoomed at 100%, I will just use my brush with blue for computing and I will tell the program, hey, can you please take a better look at this because these edges you didn't find so well. And the first time you'll use the brush, you'll find it's very slow to process, but the more you use it, the more, the faster it would go. So here we have some green from the background, so I'll compute this one as well. And that is better. This green that you see over here, this is just from uh, the light bouncing from the grass. So it just creates a green color cast. I will show you how to get rid of that in a second. Let's take a better look. I'll hold down the space bar to move around the image, see how the rest of the mask is. And it's really not bad, actually. Let's see what it would look like if we blur the background. I'll go back to fit the screen and as you can see, right now we're seeing this uh, no background and we see the tri map. If you don't want to see the tri map and you just want to see your original image, click this button over here and that is the image we worked with. And now over here I have the edge refinements that I can work with. For example, if we want to get rid of that green, we can work with two tools. We can work with the fringe and if you increase that, you see how the green kind of goes away and it got rid of most of it. So this is the before with the green, and this is on the end when I move it all the way to the right. If that is not enough, that you also can use this edge shift. So if I move it to the left, it shrinks my selection. And you can see I can get rid of pretty much completely the whole green that was here. So this is the, bef the after, and this was the before. Now I'm also losing some of those whiskers as I, sh uh, shift the edge and then we have the background here for the background we have the option of just blurring the background and then we have the strength slider as you can see this is at zero so it's exactly the same this is the before this is the after but as i increase the strength you see how it blurs the background and it does such a beautiful job i can go nuts and go 
100% and now we have a very very blurry background on this dog compared with this busy background that was here. You can also do some basic uh, adjustments to your background. I can darken it. You see, now it looks beautiful just like that. Now it really stands out to the dog. Or I can brighten it. I'm going to darken it just because it looks really great. You can, you know, adjust the contrast. I can reduce contrast, make it even darker. You can ha uh, adjust highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, temperature, tint, and saturation. So you have lots of lots of control over your background. If this is what you want to do and you just want to uh, blur it. And honestly, it is really, really a great tool for blurring the background. Then we have the color here. This is if you want to choose a color background for your dog in this example. And right now it goes to white. I think that's the default color. But if you click on this panel, you can pretty much choose, you know, any color under the rainbow here. So that's how you would use that. And then also you have image. If you're trying to do a composite, you can click on image and then you can upload an image. Let's say I want to choose, I don't even have any images ready here for you guys. I should have thought about this in advance. I'm just going to, I don't know what I will pick. Let's say we'll choose this image. And now that is the background. Now, of course, we have this green fringing. And let's see if we can get rid of that. If we defringe it, maybe bring in the shift the edge. And we could almost make it work. We still have a strong green over there. So you probably want to pick a background if you change the background with something that has green in it. That way it just kind of gets camouflaged. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to go to background. And really where this program shines is into blurring the background. I really like the way it works and it selects the subjects really, really easy. So now we have our background. It is really, really blurred. We can see this. You can see one window. This is the view. This is the comparison, the one that we um, used before. We also have all the windows. Now we can see the um, original image, the blurred image. We can see the mask and we can see the cutout. Then this is the, let me go back to compare. I like that one. Then we can fit the screen, zoom in at 100%. Like I said, hold down space bar to move around the image. You can zoom with this uh, slider over here. This is the reset button. If you do not like your mask, you can go and reset again. And then, like I said before, this is your uh, mask um dialogue where you have all your color tools and so on then you have the edge where you can refine your edge and then your background and this is pretty much a quick overview of this program i think it's a wonderful wonderful program and uh, then when you save your images just click on the save button and now you have many options of saving this image you can save it with a transparent background and it will save it as a png so those of you guys who work on Luminar Neo, you can save it as a PNG and then import it into Luminar Neo and use it as a layer with a transparent background if you want to work on the subject and background separately. You can save it as a composite and that will just save it with your blurry background. So in this case, you will save this image over here. And then you can, if you work on uh, Photoshop, let's say, and you are using it as a plugin, you can save the mask only or the tri map. So, you know, in this case, I will just save it as a composite because all I wanted to do is blur the background on this dog. And that is pretty much all I wanted to show you about Topaz Mask AI. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I will see you in my next video.